I am Stella and I'm from Fremantle in Western Australia. I grew up listening to uh, a combination of Welsh bands and Australian bands because my mum's Welsh and my dad's Aussie. So we, um, I listened to a Welsh band called Catatonia a lot, religiously, and, um, and then Billy Bragg who's from England and then, um, and then Australian bands like Paul Kelly. Um, Killing Heidi and stuff like that. So I've had I've had a nice little combo deal. Paul Kelly could be kind of folk. I guess it's very song right, song orientated. All of those bands have like very much like um, you know lyrical content that that kind of like springs to mind and makes you think. And you're listening to the words as well as the song, which I really love. I got started probably straight out of high school. I just started playing in markets and busking and and then bars and then joining bands and I studied music for a little while and then I yeah I've just like played on like a lot of other people's projects pretty much for eight years until I turned 25 and then I put out um, a little five track EP that I was expecting to sell kind of 40 cassettes it was kind of like a little demo tape really that's how I always wanted it to sound and feel and then it, it went big and people heard it and people started adding my songs to Spotify playlists and now I'm here a year later. I think my big break came then I guess. It's, it's just a weird, it's a weird thing. I still feel like I'm breaking. <laughs> yeah. I get my inspirations from uh, a combination of things. Life experiences and other people's experiences that they share with me. With that teamed with watching how other musicians tell their stories and their inspirations and, and articulate their visions and stuff like that, that helps me um, work out my style and, and how I want to perform and how I want people to hear me. No formula. I don't have a formula. I wish I knew what the formula was, but I don't. I just, it just hits me like a brick. <laughs> I think life events, like growing out of relationships is really crazy for me. Like that, that's been a big thing and in previous relationships, one in particular which was a pretty bad breakup years ago, um, it's not a sob story, I'm not, there's no tears here, don't worry, I'm fine, um, <laughs> uh, but you know, years ago I'm able to still draw from, from those experiences and um, I think as a young girl you learn more and more and more about your self-worth the older you get and the more experiences you go through and sometimes it takes you not being treated very well to, to learn how much you are actually worth. So I think growing out of those experiences has really helped me write music. And, and then there have been life events like, the, you know, the situation that inspired me to write Boys Will Be Boys it was a very singular life event that, you know, I needed to write something to be able to work through that. So, yeah. Yeah, I think when I performed that song, Talking, which is about that, that kind of relationship I was in, where you, it was just like, no matter what you did, you tried to change the small things to fix the relationship, but really, at the crux of it, you were on a sinking ship, and you probably needed to get a life jacket on three months before you did, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So I think, um, I, I definitely go back to that time, but I look at it as an older woman, I look at it, you know, as four years on, and, and feeling glad that I've been able to grow from that and um, but it's still nice to be able to to process things and we, we process things in in our own time I think you know as humans sometimes it takes years for us to kind of go oh my god like that wasn't good that was a bad situation or oh that was actually not so bad so yeah it takes us some time and I think I'm I still wake up sometimes and go oh my god <laughs> so yeah I don't have any sense of censorship when I write songs. I've got, I talk about masturbation, I talk about, you know, sexual assault, um, I talk about Tinder dates, um, and, you know, I, I think I, and I swear a lot, and I think that probably annoys a lot of people, but I'm just, I'm just gonna keep doing that because that's me. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I think we always coexist with people who have different ideologies. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to get to a place in the world where everyone feels the same way about the same thing because that's, that's just not what life is. So I think it's really important and I, I welcome people who have different ideologies to me to kindly engage in, in um, you know, productive conversation and I'm always willing to learn as well and I think 
I'm still learning about so many situations and, and people's lives. So I think it's really important that we continue talking rather than um, just getting really angry. Both of the video clips were my ideas and they were my concepts. Um, the first one, Boys Will Be Boys, um, I really wanted to make sure that it wasn't about me in that video clip and I wanted to make sure that it was capturing normal women of all, of, of all diversities and, and just and filming them in their space and, um, and, just, and just showing that, that I think it's capturing maybe the aftermath of, of, of you know, situations and stuff like that. So that was really, that was a really one that was close to my heart and those, those four, five, four women that I worked with are just so beautiful and they're very close friends of mine and um, I'm so grateful to them for taking part in that. And in Mechanical Bull, I always had this idea because it's like, you know, that song I wrote about working in a bar and about the creepy men um, kind of like hitting on you or like groping you and, or making sexual advances and stuff. So I wanted to be able to articulate that without just like being really serious and I, I wanted to find like a, a different sort of way of, of portraying those experiences and the guys that, uh, that, that portrayed the, the, you know, the, manne the, the mannequin pieces and then the men that were kind of interacting with them, they were such amazing sports, they did so well. <laughs> And it was really fun, like I had such an amazing time doing that, doing that video clip, yeah. The attention is really weird and I, I don't know how to get used to it and I'm still pinching myself every time um, anyone wants to talk to me <laughs> about myself um, because I've, I've been, you know, for many years just playing on other people's work and being part of that, so being all of a sudden the camera's on me and it's, it's quite interesting. So I'm still getting used to it, but I, I don't think it's affecting my writing. I think it's actually helping my writing and I, it, writing's become even more of a, an escape and it's become even, even more of a, you know, opportunity for me now. So thankfully it's been positive for my writing and I'll get you, I don't know, I don't think anyone ever gets used to attention um, for their work. I think you could speak to any artist or anyone. I don't think they will ever say they they're used to it. I don't feel like I'm completely like I don't feel like I'm separate from my work at all. Like when I'm on stage, that's just like completely me um, in every capacity. The serious songs, the funny songs, like it's all me, um, which makes my life easy. It means that I can you know walk down to the shops as myself and be myself and not feel like I'm. Under, in a disguise or anything like that. So in that way, I do get to just live my life as I am, but in a way that it's just kind of like out in the open for a lot of people. So I guess in that way, it can be kind of pretty scary that everyone knows me for exactly who I am. There are a lot of things that obviously I don't share everything, but it's, you know, it's pretty much me up there. I think deep down, I've always really, really enjoyed playing in other people's bands and I got the opportunity to fill in uh, on guitar for Methyl Ethel last year just for like a week because um, Hamish, their guitarist, had to have surgery on his hand. So just even just for a week being part of someone else's project and getting to just like play the music and play my guitar and, and have that, I think it's just like really fun and joyful. It's like being part of a, a sports team, I guess. I would gladly just join a band at any moment, but I know that I've got to work on my, my own music as any well. Band. Any band, <laughs> Slipknot, bring it on. <laughs> in terms of interests and passions, it's just like, it's been music all along as being the main thing. It's hard to talk about. It's just like, it's a weird thing, but like, it's not, I don't know if it's a passion or an interest, but when I'm not doing music, I'm often, reading or maybe like yoga and meditation and I feel like those things are like I'm starting to when music became like the big things for like a year I've like forgotten to do a lot of things that I used to really just like enjoy and I think now I'm finally like okay I'm hit the ground running and now I can start remembering all of those other things that I used to love doing so check back with me in a year I'll probably have a few more <laughs> Right now I'm reading um, The Wind Up Bird Chronicles by Haruki Murakami. Um, shout out to Malcolm from Whitney, he passed that on to me. Um, it's like a very 
tour bus worn book it looks it's very very tattered and I love it um, so yeah I'm reading that at the moment and that's been really good I just watched um, call me by your name um, which is just a beautiful beautiful film and music everywhere Aldous Harding at the moment still like she put her album out last year and she's from New Zealand and that's still really like hitting me hard um, but there's also some amazing artists. Faye Webster has put something out recently and it's amazing. And Natalie Press is another one. So into the, the there's some amazing women out there killing it. And Sudan Archives, uh, she's incredible as well. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm in the US and I'm playing two more shows and then I'm back to Australia to tour, to tour and then back to Europe to tour for a month. So essentially for the next three months, I'm on the road. Um, and then for June and July, I'm going to be working on my album and, and finding my roots again and, and remembering all of the other hobbies that I have. <laughs>